Good morning everyone, hope you're well. It's uh, 1st of December 2021 here in the UK and this is a brand new Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. And it looks like we've got a new battery. This looks like this car has the new LFP battery. So what does that mean? What difference will it make to range and charging? And are there any other changes to the Standard Range Plus that I can find? So I'll have a sleep around this car, see what differences I can spot and plug it in to charge it. Okay, so let's have a look. Why do I think this has got the LFP battery? Well, if I get in the car, let me just close the door here for a second. I'm gonna plug it in in a minute. Um, but if I go to set limit here for the charging screen, uh, there's no longer a daily and trip amount. So in the previous cars, 90% was where it would advise you charge the car to daily. Now, it doesn't say any of that, it just says you can charge it up to 50 to 100%. No advice about daily or trip charging at all. Because with a lot of electric cars, and certainly with Teslas, they've always set a daily limit of 90% so that you're not 100% all the time. Um, so obviously that day-to-day -day will give you less range, which is fine. You can charge it 100% if you're doing a trip, but day-to-day -day you're only typically going up to 90% and using the charge from there. So if you can charge 100% all the time, it does mean you've got more range available to you. Now, this car at the moment is charged to 36%. It looks like it doesn't have the software update where when I tap that, it will give me the uh, uh, distance. Let's have a look, go to display. Let's go to distance here. 98 miles that's showing as now that would be pretty optimistic as ever with the quoted figures and what you can actually get is a very different story and that's why we do lots of videos giving real world scenarios and range examples um, but what i'm going to do here this new lfp battery i explained a bit about lfp in a minute is also uh undergone some testing by brilliant bjorn and check out his channel in norway um john bjorn is charge this and show some really fast charging so this car's at 36 percent now it's 11.31, let me plug it in, see and get it charging, and then I can talk to you a bit more about other changes. This is only a V2 charger, so it's not gonna be delivering max, max power, but let's have a look. Let's plug it in, PCS, and let's see what that goes up to. Okay, so it's just plugged in, and this is a cold battery, cold car, by the way. It hasn't been driven. If I look at this, uh, uh, the mileage, in fact, I can't show it, it should have been as well, but this car's got, just a few miles on the clock and has been trailered here so this is from a stone cold battery so this does need to ramp up it's um let's have a look 11 degrees celsius today and let's see what we get from this so it's straight away gone up to about 27 kilowatts which is a bit slow of course but it's a stone cold battery let's see how that warms up and ramps up throughout the percentage of course this is started in charge i'm just going to look around the car for any other changes that might happen this is a made in china car like we've been receiving um, over the past few months here in the UK. So it's a made in Shanghai car. And I'm gonna try and spot any of the changes. It's a standard range plus. The only optional extra are the 19 inch uh, sport alloys, um, which still need the stickers taking off. That's right, Tesla, I'll do that. And then you worry about that. Uh, no fog lights in the standard range. It looks very much the same on the outside. Of course, D-Chrome like all the refreshes for best part of a year now. Now, Look at this, there's no lumbar adjustment on the passenger seat. There used to be, I'm pretty sure I'm saying there used to be lumbar adjustment, even on the standard ranges, but there isn't on this one. Is that due to chip shortages? Will that change? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's been a bit tight, you're not gonna get it. Uh, the, I've heard rumors that the uh, wireless charging pad might not be operational yet, um, but it is on this car, maybe on some future cars they won't be, and that's because of chip shortages. And in here, all looks much the same. Now let's have a quick check. Oh, see, it's only charging at 16, 17 kilowatts, but it is a stone cold battery, remember? Let's see if that warms up and speeds up. Um, so there's no heated steering wheel, no heated rear seat. So now on the new cars from that you order online now, which will be the delivery uh, in 2022, um, the standard range has heated steering wheel and heated rear seats, I believe now, but this car doesn't. Let's have a look in the back. That all looks familiar. I think that's all much the same. Can't see any other changes to it. We've got the this power toga like all the refreshes have. And inside here, all the same. I can't spot any differences there. I'll tell you one difference actually. Uh, the brake lights here for the UK market at least has changed. So the brake lights used to be just a little bit in the middle of the headlight, uh, rear lights here. But now the brake lights include this whole outer section. So all the newer recent cars have got this whole outer section of brake lights. So the lights look exactly the same, but just changed slightly there. 
all the uh, quality fit and finish by the way all looks great to me uh, I see some of the black cars they were handing over had a few swirls in them but this midnight silver is great panel graphs are great I have found recently that the build quality has been brilliant from Tesla um, very consistent with all the made in China cars We've got a made in China long range uh, Model 3 that we got in, I think June, 2021. That's now got about 11, 12,000 miles and it's been absolutely faultless, no issues, no problems at all, which is great. Uh, in the front here, we got our uh, type two cable and our three pin charger kit in here. And zip site stuff, but I've had a look, it is in there. I can't see any changes to the front here. Again, no bag hooks like some of the earlier cars. No mats, just a turn eye under there. So what does it mean when I say LFP batteries? Well, basically this is a, a different battery to the previous cars, and this is a different battery chemistry. And so this doesn't use nickel and cobalt. And there's some advantages to that. Uh, one, it's cheaper to make. So bigger margins for Tesla. Uh, two, it's... Um, is a little bit easier to ethically mine the materials basically so um they are going to be you know ethical mining is a really key thing and it's something that comes up with a lot of people that try and criticize electric vehicles for mining i think they seem to forget that their combustion cars need mining for materials all of their life but anyway um it will make the sourcing the materials uh, easier basically um the downsides are it's less energy dense so I think this will mean, uh, I think Tesla can get away with this basically because although they're less energy dense, it's still capable in a Model 3 standard range because it's so efficient um, that you can still get a really good range out of the car. So it's quite a change. So the long range and performance models um, don't have this, this battery chemistry. They've still got the previous uh, uh, stuff, uh, which do require nickel and cobalt. Um, but so this is only for the standard ranges and I think basically it's, it's cheaper for Tesla, easier for Tesla and it doesn't mean you've got to um, uh, compromise on range with the car actually because it is so efficient. It also apparently means it's easier to recycle at the end of life. I mean I think batteries will last for years and years and years and then you go into second life use of the batteries so you can you know take them apart and use them for power walls and such like in theory i think um no chemists i'm sure some people have some great comments for this um but you know this is a uh, if they do come to end of life then they're a lot easier to recycle which is obviously a key aspect to um sustainable you know vehicles and transport and longevity of electric vehicles so it covers a few key topics and um this this is you know fairly big change now we're not able to do this sort of range test today and see what real world range you can get out of it. I've always said with a Model 3 standard range that it can do, you know, about 200 miles, basically. We've driven them well over 220 miles, but in the winter, you can be well under 200 miles as well. That's about 160 miles real world. Remember, the quoted figures are always optimistic and testbed conditions and such like, and there's various different figures out there. Um, but, you know, if this can still cover a couple hundred miles quite comfortably then that's great and we're also seeing uh, by the look of it that they can actually have some really good charging speeds but i think the key with that is the battery has to be really warm uh, today this battery is not warm so at the moment as i look at the screen in the background it's still charging really quite slowly yeah so the cold battery is really throttling this back so 40 percent it's still only pulling 18 kilowatts that's it <laughs> so um as ever, always arrive at supercharger with a warm battery and as low a state as charge as possible. But I will be interested to see if this can kind of warm itself up and pick up uh, over time. But if you live near a charger, you get up in a cold morning, drive to a charger and then wonder why it's charging slowly. It's just because it's all too cold to take the fast speeds. And that's been always been the same, this battery and the previous batteries. Although I'm hoping this will pick up fairly soon as it starts warming up. 50% battery, 11.56 now and it's still only pulling 26 kilowatts. I've got the climate control off, let's turn it on actually, let's see if when the heating will make any difference to that. Uh, so 50% battery, let's have a look at uh, what that's projecting for range, at least on their numbers anyway, again optimistic. Um, 136 miles, so one would assume at 100%, which I'm not going to have time to go to today, uh, this would be showing a range of you know 270 odd miles. Um, which if you achieve that would be amazing, but I don't think that's going to be the case. So let's go back to percentage now. And let's see with the climate control on. Still 26 kilowatts. Doesn't seem to really make a difference. So the battery's not really warming. It's not really pulling high speeds yet. 
Hmm. Does it drive any differently? Well, I've only had a chance to drive this one just literally up the road and back. So a very, very brief test and I can't tell any difference between this and any of the previous standard ranges. So I think if you order a new one online now, they're quoting slightly better performance, I think, by a couple of fractions of a second. But I don't know if this is one of those or not. They'll just apply to new ones ordered now. Um, but essentially, it just feels exactly the same. It would be good to do a really good long drive with one of these, of course, a new one LFP battery versus an older one. Um, do a range test comparison, efficiency comparison, and recharging comparison. So we'll see if we can do that with another uh, LFP standard range plus. If we can get our hands on one of those in the near future, we'll certainly try that side by side, same time, you know, same condition, same speed, best way to compare the efficiency. So that'll be on one of my target list of jobs to do soon. That's 64%, I was still only getting 28 kilowatts. I've actually just moved to a different stall at these chargers. And initially it jumped to 40 kilowatts, but straight away it's come back down to 28, 29 kilowatts. So really not building the heat into this and not getting a fast charge at all. So I'll give it a few more minutes and I'm gonna have to get up and go because I'm just limited on time today. So 50 minutes has gone past and I still haven't seen really any higher than 27, 28 kilowatts on the car. So I think I've called it quits for today and it's not a brilliant test because it's not very real world in that it wasn't driven first. Normally you just plug in a home charge, drive a couple hundred miles and preheat the car and such like as well. But uh, so, you know, a bit of a uh, inconclusive test really, but nonetheless, what it does show is cold battery, LFP battery. Yeah, that doesn't really charge fast at all. And I guess it does mean something for those people who um, don't charge at home. There are a number of owners who just use uh, public charging. They live not too far from a uh, fast charger. And I think you need to allow that potentially in colder weather like this, at least, I mean, it's 10 degrees Celsius today. It's not that cold. Um, you're just not going to get the heat in the battery to charge it. 67% now, 26, 27 kilowatts. That's 12, 21. So we've been plugged in for very nearly 50 minutes. And that's about all I've got time for today. So um, it'd be interesting to see more of this. I'd be interested to watch more of Bjorn Elian's excellent videos. Uh, he will measure battery temperature and such like. So do check out his channel as well. Um, I'm going to call it quits for today. A bit inconclusive, but nonetheless interesting to see uh, what seems to be these new batteries in the UK Model 3 standard ranges. Um, so I hope that was interesting. Thank you for watching. And there's some really good videos coming up soon. So stay subscribed. Hit a little bell icon for notifications. And I'll see you on the next one.